Well, welcome everyone. It's great to be with you today. Um, and all those watching at home on television. Uh, we're gonna, uh, got some announcements to make. I got a few. Uh, just a, a little heads up. We're, we're going to have a worship committee meeting on Tuesday. And we, we're we kind of thinking of doing the Paul uh, Sunday parade again this year. But we'll, we'll kind of keep that in mind. So we'll probably start at the high school and come down. But we'll give you, we'll let you know more about that as it gets closer. But kind of keep that in mind. Um, also, we're going to be talking about uh, the kids will be, uh, the Sunday school kids will be, uh, we're going to try to do the uh, Easter performance with the kids uh, this year. We're going to be starting on that this morning. So, um, and uh, in their bullets in here, I, uh, today is Maxie Williams' birthday. And uh, I know I, we're supposed to send her some cards. I, I sent mine yesterday, so she'll probably get it, uh, get it Monday. But uh, uh, I, was, I sent her a bunch of pictures of the, the kids through at Sunday school. Um, and then we have a worship committee meeting on uh, Tuesday at 5.30. Uh, praise service will be... Uh, back again, we had a, a couple off because of basketball, and uh, there's a birthday Friday for Brian Sherman, that's Swillen's, Pastor Swillen's husband, right? And uh, Saturday, Tammy Warren has a birthday, and Gracie Shaw. Okay, and uh, I'm sporting the archery shirt today. The archery thing was uh, yesterday, uh, Gary? Yeah, it was, uh, we're not doing the state in person, so it was a video or a tournament in the center scores. The way I understand, I'm not real closely involved in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got a couple, a couple kids from my barn uh, uh, in archery over there. That's how I got the shirt. Okay, does anybody else have any announcements today? Okay, very good. All right, so let's have our prelude and a lighting of the altar candles.
God of glory and might, speak to us with your wisdom, that we might truly hear you. Display your majesty, that we might truly see you. Transform the chaos of our lives with the clarity of your call, that we might worship you with your spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Okay, very good. Now let's all rise for our open song. Take time to be holy.
Snow is freely given, it's white, it's pure. It reminds us of the forgiveness of sins. Okay, last week, part two, what did we talk about? Water. Water, and it melting. Yes, the water runs through us. It reminds us of our baptism. It reminds us that we are forgiven and cleansed. Okay, so what's going to come next? Rain. What's the rain going to bring? Flowers. Flowers, yes. Has anybody already been out and looked and seen their tulips or their crocuses popping up out of the ground? Yes. And what, what does that represent to you? Spring, new life. New life, Jeannie, correct. It represents new life. So we have been blessed with um, Jesus dying on the cross to forgive our sins, to cleanse us through our baptism. And now, now God is giving us new life, and it's going to come in the sign of the spring flowers. So God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And he sends us these little things each and every day of our lives. So I just want to remind everybody to take the time and remember that the snow is beautiful, even when it rains for 40 days and 40 nights. It's beautiful, and it's going to bring us new life in all the promises that God has made us and the promises that he continues to keep. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all of the gifts that you give us each and every day. Sometimes it's hard to see your blessings and gifts through trials and tribulations, but we trust in you, and we know that your word and your promises you always keep. And we look forward to your continued promises, and please guide us to do your work in your world. And all God's children said, Amen. All right, thank you very much, Jenny. That was great. Okay, now we are at our part of our service where we lift up uh, prayers of help or pray praise things. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm thankful that uh, the weather's getting nice and me and Maddie have been having a great time at the barn with the writing students and I'm thankful for that and uh, I did lose a close friend here last week, uh, Bill Yaunt. I've known since I was a teenager. He, he passed away last week, yeah. So I want uh, uh, prayers for all. Um, he was a great guy. Everybody that loved him. So. Okay, does anybody else have anything you want to lift up in praise or you're concerned about? Jenny! Howard, please. He had the heart attack. He had a couple more stunts put in. The stunts collapsed. And so um, angioplasty isn't even a choice. It's going to be complete bypass. But they had to wait for the blood thinners to get out of his system. So for the last five days, he's been in the hospital um, waiting. Um, his heart's only working at 30%. And he goes in for surgery tomorrow morning, I believe at 6 a.m., for a bypass surgery. So please... Um, Keep him in your prayers as he continues to struggle through some health issues. Yeah, yeah very good. Think about him, and what he's going through. Anything else? Anything you're thrilled about? It's good to see our people back. Yes, it is. It's great to be back. I really missed Sunday school. Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been great. Hopefully about BBS this year, too. Okay, anything else, guys? Okay, that's, we'll turn it over to Pastor Bono for the pastoral prayer.
and spend together with our loved ones. Thank you for the protection that you have given upon us all. Thank you for the good weather that we had this week. We lay down on your altar all those who are struggling with sickness, illness, and problems right now. You are indeed our Jehovah Rapa, who is the great healer. We ask your healing hand to touch our brothers and sisters who are in pain right now. Lord, touch them and let them be healed. We believe if it is your will, you will grant healing to those who are in need right now. It might be emotional, physical, and spiritual healing. We ask for your comfort and joy to be upon us all. Even if we cannot come to worship you the way we have been doing worship before. Lord, let us feel your presence through the power of your Holy Spirit in us and in our needs. Be upon each and every, every household who joins us in our worship and we ask and declare your blessings, provision, protection be upon them all. We lift up our praises and thanksgiving for those celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries. We pray, let your blessings and favor rest upon them as they celebrate their life's joys and victories. For those who have special concerns, Lord, you know them and you know their situation. Please answer our prayers and help and help them. Thank you for being with us in our worship today. We magnify and glorify you. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
For in six days the Lord made the earth, the heaven and earth, and sea, and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Okay, that's the Old Testament reading. Okay, now we, I'll ask you to rise for the Gospel reading. When I was a young boy, 
a young, when I was young, one of the rules given to us by our mother was for us to attend Sunday school. Rule number one. We are given our money for church. A part of the money is for Sunday school offering. The other part is for our snacks. One year, one day. I remember we were 15 in our class, but since the Sunday school was boring, the children like me. What I did was to give my offering to my sister and have her give it for me. Then I went out to I went out to head for the store and buy a snack for myself. <laughs> but my mom would know that I did not attend because she would ask my sister. And my sister would always tell her the truth. Growing up, our rule at home is for us to finish our education in college. We, are, we were eight siblings in the family, and I am the sixth. One of my older brothers gave me money to enroll. My father died early when I was 13 years old. So my older brothers took care of, me, of our needs in schooling. When I did, what I did when he gave the money to me is, instead of enrolling in college, I went to another place to try my luck in life. I did not enroll. My brother got so upset angry with me. Later I realized I have to be serious and finish my college, which I did. Rules I believe are good. I grew up with them. I messed some and I followed some. But I believe I am the result of those rules given to me as I was grow up, growing up, I mean. What about you? Are rules good? What do you think? Why are they good? And why are they not good? Our reading from Old Testament today brings us to a set of rules. The Ten Commandments, also known as the Decalogue. Decalogue are a set of biblical principles relating to ethics and worship that play a fundamental role in Judaism and Christianity. Are we still bound by the Ten Commandments today? Are we still bound by the Ten Commandments today? Jesus said in Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 20, in New King, King James Version, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
but whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, yes, we are. We are bound and exalted to follow the Ten Commandments of God. Jesus summarized the Ten Commandments to two. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. The two most important commandments given by Jesus are the Ten Commandments expounded. These are the moral laws that we need to follow to live a life that God intends us to live. These words marks the covenant between God and the Hebrew people. Let us be reminded that Moses and the Hebrew people redeemed by God. They have experienced and witnessed with their very eyes the glory and saving grace of God. They knew God. We then can conclude, conclude that these people from whom these words were given knew God. They believed in Him as the one and true living God. It was not given to them so that they can witness and believe in God. These words were not given so that they can earn the favor of God. No. These words were given to people who have already received the grace and favor of God. Why then were they given? Why then were they given? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we read, These words are given to you. First, so that you so that you, your children, and their children may fear the Lord. Second, so that you may enjoy life. Third, and all may go well with you. Fourth, so that you may increase greatly. God's reason for giving the Decalogue is to bless the Hebrew people who were traveling to the promised land. This is how God wants the people to live, to fear Him and enjoy a good and blessed life. All these words describe what God wants His children to be. All these words were guiding principles to light the path of those who People who have encountered and have experienced the saving grace of God so that they know how to navigate the struggles that will come along their journey to the promised land. God created us human beings and He knows us and the struggles that we face. He knew that the people whom He had created and redeemed would struggle in making Him first and above anything else. He knew they have difficulty in giving Him the first priority in their life. So He said, Thou shall not have any other gods before Me. And Jesus reiterated it by saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. 
Aren't we guilty of disobeying this command? Because the world is so tempting and there are so many things that wants the first priority in our life. First, money, power, honor. And these things is where we put our time and energy and life. God comes later in our list of priorities. So we are reminded today, evaluate your priorities. Evaluate our priorities in life. God knew we would struggle to love others. God knew we would struggle to love others. So he said, Honor the father and mother who among us here have not felt that feeling of wanting to rebel and fight back our parents. We struggle, especially at the teenager years of life. But we are reminded to honor our parents. Those of you in Ager and daughter listening right now, when you feel like rebelling on you, your parents, remembers, remember God's words, honor your father and mother so that you will live long. Don't you want to live long? Honor is the key. God knew we would struggle with possessions, with morality and purity, anger, bitterness, jealousy, and pride. He knew we would struggle in loving other people. God offers the right way to live for the Hebrew. God offers the right way to live for the Hebrew people and for all of us too today. For all who have encountered the grace and redemption offered by God through Jesus Christ. All these words are words that reflect the glory of God. We are given the laws for our own benefit not for our own destruction. It is for our own good. The Decalogue is for our own good. If we want to reflect God's glory in our life, let us follow. And yes, there will be times when we'll fail. But God knows our hearts, and His grace abounds in our weaknesses. God bless us all as we love God and love our neighbor. Amen. Hearing the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. 
sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, the Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, upon earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He takes, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for us. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave it thanks, gave it, his, gave it to his disciples, and said, Bring from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour out for, for you, for many, for, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as open as you drink it in remembrance of me. By the price given for you, <coughs> the blood of Christ given for you. Um... Uh -huh.